Hi there. Today's tutorial is all about making a fashion magazine cover in InDesign, so let's get started. I'm going to use A4 as it's a common European size, so let's change the units to millimeters. The size is already set to A4, which is 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. I'll be using three pages. Yeah, I know you must be thinking, shouldn't there be two pages, one for front and the other one for back cover? But hold your thought, I'll let you know soon enough what we're going to do with the third page. I'm going to use 5mm margin all around and bleed off 3mm because I'll be using images, the edges of which are going to be sliced off in print. And then hit create. Now you see we have three pages that are not even facing each other at this point. So our first task is to join them all in the form of a spread. We can also see that a master is applied to all the three pages and we won't require to add another master. So we'll let that stay as it is. At this point, if you try to move page two next to page one to create a spread, you'll find that it refuses to sit there. That is because we need to do something before this step. You see the burger menu on top right? Click on it to reveal the drop down and uncheck allow document pages to shuffle option. And now when you try to move the pages, they will snap without any issues. All right, so we have our spread ready. Now let me tell you what this third page is for. We'll use this page as the spine of the book. In fact, let me take you to a website that can do the spine width calculation. It's called printondemandworldwide.com. And this is the address if you want to try it. Here you can find the spine calculator. In the type of book drop down, there are two options. Case bound books are also known as hardcover books. They have durable protective covers made from cardboard wrapped with paper, cloth or another durable fabric and covered spines that safeguard the pages inside. But we'll be using the other option, which is paperback books. Taking into account it's a high style luxurious magazine, let's pick 150 GSM coated paper, which is relatively thicker than the traditional magazines have. And for the last option, let's just say our magazine has 300 pages. And there you can see it populates the approximate measurement of the spine, which is 21.2 millimeters. So we're going to write this down somewhere and then head back to InDesign. In here, let's click on the center page thumbnail in the pages panel and then pick the page tool. And the moment you do that, your selected page will be highlighted with these handles all around. Now what we need to do is set the liquid page rule. At this point, it is set to default, which is controlled by master. What we need to do is change it to scale because we're planning to scale it down to the measurement we calculated, remember? Now holding option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, you can either click and drag in to resize the page in the middle, or you can set the measurement here on top and it will resize the page. Now just drag the pages to align them next to each other and they will easily snap together. Now we have both our pages and the spine with the margins and bleeds set and aligned properly. The blank page on the left is the back cover and the one on the right is the front cover. What we'll do is, first of all, we'll add images and then we'll move on to adding text. So pick the rectangle frame tool and make a rectangle on the front page, ensuring that you include the bleed area as well. Next, go to file and then place and locate your image from the computer. I have set my documents to import images with content aware fit option by default. If yours is not set to content aware fit, right click on your image and go to fitting. And here you have quite a few options to choose from. So for now, select content aware fit. I'm planning to use another image on the back cover, which is basically going to be a full page ad like you find in most of these fashion or lifestyle magazines. So we need to add a panel for the spine. So pick the rectangle tool and make a rectangle covering the spine of the book. 
ensuring that you include the bleed area as well. Now pick the color theme tool. This tool extracts the colors of your image and make a color palette out of it. So with the rectangle selected, drag the green color from the palette and drop it to the rectangle and it shall fill the rectangle with that color. For now, we'll leave the rectangle as is. We'll come back to the rectangle a little later. Next, pick the rectangle frame tool and make a frame covering the entire back cover page, including the bleed. And then go to file and then place and locate the image from your computer. Next, using the rectangle frame tool, make another smaller rectangle at the bottom right of the back cover page. We'll add the ISB and code image here. So to import it, go to file and then place and locate the image from your computer. Now you see content aware fit is not really the right option to be used for this one. So I'm going to right click on the image and go to fitting and then select fit content to frame option. So my frame remains intact, but the image resizes itself to the frame using this option. I don't want to overcomplicate the ad on the back cover, so I'll just use the website address signifying that it's an online makeup store. So let's grab the text tool and drag a text box and type in www.makeup.com. By the way, there is no such store, so don't take me seriously just this time. I'm going to change the font to humanist and increase the font size as well. Our text is not clearly visible at this point. So let's grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle and then add a black fill to it. And then reduce the opacity to about 50%. Now let's change the font color to white and place it on top of the rectangle. At this point, you need to bring it forward and you can use the shortcut shift command and right bracket on a Mac or shift control right bracket on a PC. Now center align the text to the rectangle and place it on the center of the page. To establish the center point of the page, grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle excluding the bleed this time. So you will have to start from the outer margin of the page till the margin of the spine as illustrated. Now click and drag a guide from the ruler on the left and drop it to the center point of this rectangle you've just made. Now select both the rectangles and the text which is on top of the rectangle and then click once again on the bigger rectangle you made just to establish the center point and then click on align horizontal centers option from the alignment option on top and your text should now be center aligned to the page. Since you've successfully established the center of the page, you can delete the rectangle now. All right, our back cover is ready. So let's move on to the front cover now. Let's start with the title of the magazine. So grab the text tool and make a text box. Before I start typing, let's also establish the center point for the front cover as well, much like we did for the back cover. So grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle from margin to margin. And then drag a guide from the ruler and drop it to the center of this rectangle. Since we've established the center of this page as well, let's delete this rectangle as we don't need it anymore. Now let's align the center of our text box to the guide we've made. Next. Double click in the text box and type in style. So the imaginary name of our magazine is style. Now with the text selected, let's change the font to a flowing text font. I'm going to pick typo upright and increase the font size to 200 points. Let's also center align the text to the text box and change the font color to white. Let's also drag the text box to the top and press W for the preview. I think so far so good. What do you think? All right, let's add another text that should go with the title. So let's make a text box and type in annual edition and change the font to Roboto Black and uh, update the font size to 24 
and color to white. Let's put it under the title and see how it looks. Nah. I think what we need here is to add a rectangle much like we did to the website link on the back cover. So let's copy that by holding option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and then click and drag the text to the right. Now right click on the text and select ungroup to unlink the text from the rectangle and then delete the text and place annual edition text on top of this rectangle. Resize the rectangle to fit the text and then select the text and go to type and then create outlines. Now select both the text and the rectangle and using the alignment options on top, center align the text to the rectangle and then group them by hitting command G on a Mac or control G on a PC. Let's place it at the bottom of the title to the left. No, I don't like this location for this text. I, I think I'd rather put it on top in the center as illustrated. This looks much better. All right, next, let's work on the spine here. I'd want the spine to have the gradient that's applied to the background of the image. So I need to have the dark shade on one side, which is uh, the bottom and the green to match the green on top. So let's go to window and then color and then gradient. Our gradient colors have already been applied to the side. So just double click on the slider to activate it. Now using the gradient swatch tool, let's adjust the gradient to have the right spread of the gradient colors. Perfect. Let's add some text with a little synopsis like we find in most of the fashion magazines or subheadings, so, so to speak. And since we don't have actual text, let's grab the text tool and make a text box on the right here and then right click and fill it with placeholder text. Now we can easily copy text from here. So grab the text tool and make a text box below the title and to the left and copy some text from the placeholder text we made. Let's also change the font color to white and font to Poppins bold. If you don't have Poppins Bold, you can use any other chunky font that should be fine. Just ensure that your fonts are a good combination of chunky and free-flowing fonts. You know, just to strike a balance. All right, let's have two sizes here. I'm going to make the heading bigger in size and the subheading or synopsis or whatever you may call it smaller. Instead of making another text box, I'd rather just copy this one and edit it. So holding Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, copy this text box. And then let's change the font color to a different color and put it at the bottom and have the heading on a single line. And so should be the subheading. I think I'll change the font color of my heading here to yellow. Similarly, let's copy another text box and make some changes to the heading or let's add some different text from the sample text box here on the right. And change the font to Swiss 721 or any other font of your choice and enlarge the font size. I want it in one line this time, so let's delete the rest of the text and let's adjust the position a bit. Let's make another copy of the text box and let's set it aside. I'm going to put a circle here as a highlighted element, like they have some sort of an offer or discount. So let's grab the ellipse tool and make a circle here. Also change the color to yellow for now. And then click on this swatch to reveal a pop-up. And from here, let's change the color mode to HSB. Wow, this color looks even better than yellow and it's matching the tone of the background somehow. And you see how the yellow of the text also changed automatically because we are in the process of changing the main color of the swatch. Let's adjust the color to not so bright, I think. That's perfect. And now hit OK. Now I'm going to right click on the circle and go to effects and then bevel and emboss. In the settings, let the style be outer bevel. Let the technique stay smooth and direction up. Change the highlight to multiply and update the size to four millimeter before hitting OK. Let's align the circle to the rest of the text on the left. 
Now head to the text box we had copied earlier and change it to 10% off. It's already in the green theme color of the background so we're going to let it stay as is. If yours doesn't come like this and you want to use another color from your sample, just click on the color theme tool to pick a color from the theme palette selected by InDesign or you can pick the eyedropper tool and pick the color of your choice from anywhere on the screen. Let's center a line of a text here. In fact, let's add some text after this. So let's add coupon inside and then lower the font size. Now place this text on top of the circle we've made and take your cursor to the right corner of the text box. And when you see a bi-directional arrow, click and move to rotate the text a bit. Perhaps we should have coupon inside on two lines instead of one. And I think we need to make them bold as well. Yes, now I'm happy with this result. We're going to add just one more text box on the right and our cover page is done. So holding option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, drag to copy this text box. Now change the heading to something else. And perhaps for this one, we'll use a few lines for description. Let's also change the color of the heading to the color of the circle. I think I'll put a thicker font instead. So select this heading and change the font size to a thicker font. So here I'm going to use blue as the font. Also, let's add a stroke to this font. So with the text selected, let's go to our stroke option here and select black as the color of the stroke. Now I need to add text to the spine. So I'm going to make a text box here at the bottom and type in style annual edition 2021. Let's change the font to Roboto bold and change the font color to white and also update the font size to 22 points. Let's rotate it like we rotated the discount text earlier. Only this time hold shift so that it rotates in 45 degree angles and then place it on the center of the spine. At this point, it's the right time to hit W for the preview. I think it looks professional enough, except just one teeny tiny thing. This text at the bottom of the front cover is not visible all that well. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle. It already has a black fill. So all I need to do is reduce the opacity of the rectangle. So let's reduce it to about 20%. Now let's click on the text and go to type and create outlines. Next, select the text and the rectangle and then click on rectangle once again to align the text to it and using the alignment option on top center align the text to the rectangle vertically as well as horizontally and then hit command G on a Mac or control G on a PC to group them and then place the rectangle in the center with the help of the guide. Now let's hit W for preview once again. What do you think guys? Now when we send this to print, we need to export it and for that, let's go to file and then export. From the pop-up menu, give your file a name should you want to and in the format, change it to Adobe PDF print and then hit save. And from the export pop-up, our preset is already set to high quality print, which is fine. Or you can even set it to press quality from the drop down if you want to. Also ensure that the pages is selected to spreads. Otherwise, individual pages will be printed, which we don't want. And then click on Marks and Bleeds tab on the left. And ensure Crop Marks is checked and then hit Export. Now go to the location where you save this PDF and open it. And you shall find the final cover with Crop Marks. So once printed, the printer is going to slice it off from the Crop Marks giving you a perfect color extended to the end of the sheet. Uh oh, we made a small mistake that I just noticed. You see this text on the right? This should have been right aligned. So let's quickly right align it and all will be in order. Now it's fine. All right, guys, that concludes our session today. I hope there was something new for you to learn today. So if you've enjoyed the session, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet again on Thursday, goodbye and thanks for watching.